All right, hello. My name is Joachim Neu, and together with my co-authors, Nusrit Tash and David Che, I welcome you to our presentation on Ebb and Flow Protocols, a resolution of the availability finality dilemma. Our work was prompted by this paper, which appeared on archive in the spring of 2020. The authors describe GASPER, the proposed consensus protocol for Ethereum 2, which combines the finality tool Casper FFG and the fork choice rule LMD Ghost. But is Gasper secure? Here are the key takeaways of this presentation. We found a liveness attack on Gasper. Gasper is not secure in the synchronous network model. We then dig deeper to understand the consensus problem that Gasper aims to solve and provide a formalization of this consensus problem under the name of ebb and flow protocols. While Gasper is not a secure ebb and flow protocol, we design so-called snap and chat protocols, a family of provably secure ebb and flow protocols with optimal resilience against adversarial corruption. The world of consensus protocols is pretty much divided into the following two camps. On the one hand, the more traditional partially synchronous BFT protocols, such as PBFT or hot stuff. And on the other hand, Nakamoto style longest chain based protocols, such as Bitcoin, Ethereum one or Ouroboros. Protocols from these two camps show very different behavior. Suppose a network with the following characteristics. Participation is fluctuating. In the green shaded periods, participation is high. And in the blank period, participation is low. Suppose there is also an inter intermittent network partition in the gray shaded area. In such a setting, the ledger output by a longest chain type protocol is always live, which is a desired property, property which we call dynamic availability. However, the protocol sacrifices safety under network partitions. On the other hand, the ledger output by traditional propose and vote style BFT protocols is always safe, a desired property which we call finality. However, the protocol sacrifices liveness under low participation. A natural question is, is there a consensus protocol whose output ledger provides both availability and finality? Variants of the CAP theorem tell us no. And this is perhaps not that surprising. After all, how could you have a single ledger that has both the behavior on the left and the behavior on the right plot simultaneously. So the availability finality dilemma tells us that there cannot be a single ledger that is always safe and live under both network partitions and dynamic participation. What is the next best thing that we can hope for then? We propose the following decomposition. And in fact, we argue that this is a formalization of the design goals of Gasper. We would like to have an available full ledger and a finalized prefix ledger. The available full ledger is always live and it is safe unless there is a network partition. So the available full ledger has the same properties as the ledger output by a longest chain type protocol. The finalized prefix ledger, on the other hand, is always safe and it is live unless there is low participation. So the finalized prefix ledger has the same properties as the ledger output by a traditional propose and vote style BFT protocol. And since the finalized ledger is a prefix of the available ledger, both ledgers eventually agree on a single account of history. We call this the ebb and flow property, and it provides a way to combine consensus protocols from the previously mentioned two camps. 
the name ebb and flow comes from the fact that the finalized prefix ledger falls behind the full available ledger when the network partitions or participation is low, but it catches up when the network heals. Note, we're not the first to propose such nesting of ledgers with different security guarantees. In fact, longest chain K deep ledgers are nested for increasing K and an earlier work called flexible BFT uses similar ideas. But since Gasper is not secure, the question arises, does a protocol with this ebb and flow property exist at all? Before we discuss a provably secure ebb and flow protocol, let's take a high level look at how Gasper aims to achieve the ebb and flow property and why Gasper is not secure under the synchronous network model. Gasper proceeds in epochs, which are further subdivided into time slots. Each slot has a randomly selected committee. Slot by slot, blocks are proposed and approved to grow the full available ledger based on the rules of LMD Ghost. Epoch by epoch, the finalized prefix is grown based on the rules of Casper FFG. The goal of our attacker is to build out two chains with equal number of votes so as to stall consensus. Note for each committee, a few of its members are adversarial, but most of its members are honest. Honest committee members vote for the block, which in their view already has the most votes. When the adversary is the randomly drawn block proposer in a slot, it can kickstart the following attack. It puts forth two conflicting proposals, showing one of the proposals to one half of the honest committee members and the other proposal to the other half of the honest committee members. As a result, both proposals now get equally many votes. So far, adversarial committee members have not cast a vote yet. Just before the beginning of the next slot, the adversary lets one of its committee members vote for the left block. This vote, however, is only shown to one half of the honest committee members of the next slot. Similarly, the adversary lets another one of its committee members vote for the right block. And again, it shows this vote only to the other half of the honest committee members of the next slot. So as a result, half of the honest committee members vote for the left block and half of the honest committee members vote for the right block. Again, a tie. Since both proposals again have the same number of votes, the adversary applies the same strategy in the next slot and so on. The adversary keeps repeating this process throughout epoch zero. A slight variant of this trick of confusing and swaying honest committee members by the timed release of very few adversarial votes also works for epoch one and subsequent epochs. And as a result, there are now two inconsistent but ever-growing chains between the, which the protocol never reaches a decision. Furthermore, depending on which adversarial votes honest participants happen to have just received, honest participants might be jumping back and forth between these two chains, which jeopardizes safety. So Gasper is not secure. In fact, six adversarial committee members per slot suffice to keep the attack going. And this will happen with quite a high probability, even if the adversary controls only say 10% of participants, given that there are 128 committee members per slot. In fact, if the number of committee members per slot were to grow to infinity, then the protocol is prone to this attack for any arbitrarily small fraction of adversarial participants. For more details on this attack, check out this ETH research post. Since Gasper is not secure, we designed a family of protocols called snap and chat protocols, which provably achieve the app and flow property and provide optimal resilience against adversarial corruption. In particular, the finalized prefix ledger output by this protocol is secure partitions 
if less than a third of all participants are adversarial. The available full ledger is secure under dynamic participation if less than half of awake participants are adversarial. The finalized prefix ledger is always a prefix of the available full ledger so that there is a single account of history. Note that the available ledger has the best possible resilience for a network with dynamic participation, while the finalized ledger has the best possible resilience for a network with partitions. So in this sense, we can say that the snap and chat construction is optimal. Snap and chat protocols employ an almost black box composition of an off the shelf longest chain type protocol and an off the shelf partially synchronous BFT protocol. Transactions are first ordered by the longest chain type protocol, which outputs a ledger of transactions represented as a chain of blocks. Prefixes of this chain of blocks are then snapshotted and input to the partially synchronous BFT protocol, which in turn outputs a chain of snapshots that is a chain of chains of blocks. This chain is flattened, meaning the snapshotted chains are concatenated as they are ordered and duplicate and invalid transactions are removed to obtain the finalized prefix ledger. The finalized prefix ledger is then prepended to the output of the longest chain type protocol and duplicates and invalid transactions are again removed to obtain the available full ledger. To understand the behavior of snap and chat protocols, let's look at a few examples. Under normal operation, that is there is no network partition, there is reasonably high level of participation and the adversary controls less than third of participants. Both the longest chain and the partially synchronous BFT protocol are safe and live. Transactions enter the available ledger once they enter the output ledger of the longest chain protocol. A future proposal in the BFT protocol will then include a snapshot to this ledger and hence upgrade the transaction into the finalized prefix. It usually will not take long until transactions that have appeared in the available ledger will also enter the growing finalized prefix. Due to a network partition, the longest chain protocol might temporarily lose safety. In that case, even a longest chain that was once included in a snapshot might end up abandoned. However, the snap and chat protocol continues to snapshot the longest chain. And it leaves the reconciliation of the output of the longest chain protocol and of the BFT protocol to the prefixing operation, which ensures that the finalized ledger remains a prefix of the available ledger. Finally, if there is no network partitions, but the adversary is strong and controls between a third and a half of participants, then the partially synchronous BFT protocol might not be safe or alive, but the longest chain keeps growing and with it does the available ledger. Also, since the longest chain is safe, all snapshots are consistent. And so no safety violation can be introduced into the finalized prefix or into the available ledger. Besides security, snap and chat protocols have the following advantages. Since they are an almost black box construction from off the shelf sub protocols, the security analysis is relatively simple and modular. Since the community continues to improve dynamically available and partially synchronous BFT protocols, snap and chat protocols are future-proof in the sense that they can benefit from future developments. Finally, snap and chat protocols can inherit features from the constituent protocols for their output ledgers. For example, using an accountable partially synchronous BFT protocol yields a snap and chat protocol with an accountable finalized ledger. A drawback of snap and chat protocols is that participants in the longest chain protocol cannot always determine 
at the time of block production, whether a transaction will ultimately be considered valid and can enter the ledger or not. This interferes with many common approaches to support light clients and sharding, but it has been addressed in subsequent works. For more information, check out the paper or our high level blog post on this topic or our detailed description of the attack on Gasper on ETH research.